All right, so today's class, as I said, is Make Lunch Count. My name is Tina Wajardo, Registered Dietitian and Health Educator with Bronson Community Health. And we like to start all of our classes with giving you information on um, access to care related topics, right? So um, the slide that you're looking at right now is just some resources that are available to you if you're using Bronson um, as a, a care provider. On our Bronson Health website, we have the Find a Doctor feature in which you can put in your um, zip code and um, search for either a primary care provider or a certain type of specialist that you might be looking for that is in your area and accepting new patients. So highly recommend utilizing that if you are in need of a, of a provider. If you don't use the internet, um, you can call our care advisor. That phone number is listed there as 269-341-7788. And that phone number, those care advisors can help you find the provider that you're looking for. If you are ever in need of any assistance in regards to MyChart, which is um, the app or the, the website, the login information that you can utilize to find your lab results or communicate with your providers. Um, if you ever need help with MyChart, any technical issues, you can call the Bronson Health Answers phone number at 269-341-7723, or you can always send them an email as well with the email listed there. In my previous classes, if you have been to any of my previous classes, I said that Bronson Health Answers can also help you with quotes and pricing for out-of-a-pocket expenses. Um, if you are ever referred for a service, you know, maybe a CT scan or whatever it may be. However, there's actually a completely different department for that. So I've added that to my slides for you guys. That is the last bullet point there that you see. So in order to get a price estimate for a Bronson service that you have been referred for, there is the price verification department. That's the last bullet point that you can contact and they can give you an estimate of what your out-of-pocket cost would be for that service. And of course, if you ever need any assistance with any billing or payment issues, then our patient billing department is also available. All right, so what are our goals for today? So today's conversation, Make Lunch Count, we are gonna talk about the importance of lunch, right? We all know that breakfast is important, the most important meal of the day, they say, but why is lunch important too? We're gonna to discuss how to make the most out of the period of time that maybe we have set aside for a lunch break, whether we're at work or we're at home, it's a weekend, um, lunch looks different for everybody. And we're gonna just talk about how to make the most of that time. And then we're just gonna um, review some nutrient packed lunch ideas, but I wanna hear from you guys too on what you guys enjoy to have for lunch. I think lunch is a, a tough meal to uh, meal plan for because we always think, you know, soup and sandwiches for lunch. So I would love to hear from you guys what you guys have for healthy lunches too. So first and foremost, I want to hear from you guys through a poll question. You'll see it pop up on your um, screen. How often do you skip eating lunch each week? You're going to see that question pop up on your screen and go ahead and give the answer that you feel best fits you. How often do you skip eating lunch each week? I'll give you guys a couple more seconds, a couple more people um, to respond. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll then and our results are in. Um, most of you, and most being 55% of you, say that you skip lunch one to three times per week um, with the second place vote being never. So, hey, that's good. And then just a couple of you, four to five times per week and, and one person um, every single day. So thank you guys so much. It's good to understand where you guys are at um, as far as eating lunch. So, 
you know, whatever the reason may be for skipping lunches, we'll talk about some barriers, you know, skipping meals in general, um, you know, whether that be your goal, it cuts calories. Um, and, but there's a lot of research that shows that it also may reduce our overall diet quality. And remember that we are trying to work towards healthy eating behaviors that focuses on all of our nutrient dense food groups. So the research shows, and this research was done by the United States Department of Agriculture or the USDA, they did some research that showed that when breakfast or lunch is skipped, then our overall diet quality does indeed decrease. And specifically when breakfast or lunch is, is skipped, the, the food groups, the, the groups of food that do get um, missed most often is that we are eating less fruits less vegetables and less whole grains. And we know that those three food groups there are very, very important as far as our vitamins and minerals and great fiber sources too. So it affects our diet quality and our overall health. Additionally, when breakfast or lunch is skipped, we also see in that research that empty calories is increased in that overall diet score. So what are empty calories? Empty calories are calories from foods that give us energy from the, from the source of calories themselves without being a nutrient dense calorie, meaning it is food that has a lot of calories, maybe from a lot of extra fats or maybe a lot of extra added sugars, but that food source in a whole doesn't give us a lot of vitamins and minerals. So the research showed that when breakfast and lunch is skipped, we're eating less fruit, less vegetables, less whole grains, and more empty calories. Additionally, the research showed that lunch specifically, when that meal is skipped, yes, we're seeing less vegetables, but we're also seeing less intake in seafood choices and less intake in plant proteins as well. We know those plant proteins can be very helpful in an overall a quality diet too, because that not only provides us a, an, a, a plant-based protein source, but those plant-based proteins are also great sources of fiber and antioxidants. So we're missing um, quite a few good nutrient-dense food groups when we are skipping meals in general. So what are some common barriers to eating a healthy lunch? This is the ideas that I came up with, and next I want to hear from you guys. So I think when it comes to eating a healthy lunch, we think, okay, well, maybe we are at a work site that has an on-site cafeteria, but maybe the food choices aren't the most healthy choices. Maybe it's the cost of meals at um, a cafeteria, the ease of access to fast food choices, right? Um, if we didn't actually schedule out a lunch period and we're relying upon just quick, easy food, fast food tends to be a common option at lunchtime. Um, not having adequate pantry staples at home in order to, you know, whip together a healthy lunch to take with us when we're on the go, whether it be work or any other, you know, midday commitments. Um, maybe a stressful, busy day. Um, maybe when we're stressed and we're busy, we just kind of rely upon those empty calorie type choices that just, you know, we, we check the, the lunch off the to-do list, we ate something, but was it the most nutritious choice? And then maybe we have influence from family and coworkers, right? We have good intentions. Uh, we go down to the cafeteria or wherever it may be. We go to the restaurant or we're making a meal at home with our family that's home with us at that time. And you wanted this, but they wanted that. And you you were influenced and ended up kind of caving to, you know, what their um, idea of a lunch would be, even though you really had good intentions of it being a healthy lunch for you. So, so those were some barriers that I brainstormed as to what kind of sets us back from eating a healthy lunch, but I wanna hear from you guys. So go ahead and either unmute yourself and share or type your answer in the chat. We know what barriers do you have to eating a healthy lunch? 
what barriers do you have to eating a healthy lunch? I work from home mm -hmm. and sometimes I just get overload and I forget to eat. I'm diabetic. So I've got to kind of pay attention to that. Yeah. But all of a sudden I realize it's two o'clock. I haven't had lunch and then I got to grab something. It's not, I don't always make the best choices. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just that busy day, right? That busy mm. day, you're just going, going, going and not taking that time, despite knowing that you have um, some special needs, right? That um, would be very beneficial in managing blood sugars and those sorts of things when we do have a healthy lunch on board. Thanks for sharing. I think that was Gail. Yep. Who else wants to share? I find that what I do is that I get busy and I think, oh my gosh, Again, like she was saying, uh, you know, it comes two o'clock and I haven't eaten yet. And so it's like grab something quickly because, you know, dinner will be coming soon and, you know, everybody will be coming home. And so it's like, oh, gosh, I better, you know, eat something or else I'm going to be starving before dinner. And then I'll just cram whatever in my that I'm eating. Yeah, which kind of. Um... It goes hand in hand with, with, with some of that research that the USDA showed that when breakfast or lunch is skipped, we tend to potentially eat more of those empty calories and maybe not just empty calories in that particular instance that you were sharing about, but also just eating more than you typically would at that dinner meal because you went without a whole entire meal in the middle of the day to fuel yourself. Yes, thanks for sharing. Joe, I see you're unmuted as well. Yeah, um, I don't need both breakfast and lunch. Oh. Uh, one, one is adequate, you know, so if I have a, a good a breakfast in the morning, I mean, if I have carbohydrates, then I'm hungry the next 10, 15, 20 minutes and lunch is on the menu. But um, if I eat, if I eat lunch, then I really need a very, very light dinner. I, you know, it's just too much food. And um, yeah, of course, and our, our, our hunger cues and our appetite does change um, depending upon where what stage of life we're in too. So I think that that makes sense. Um, and, you know, that could be three small meals, right? When we think about meals, we might think of larger meals, but three smaller meals could also be um, a potential way to kind of work around that. So you're still getting adequate nutrition and energy sources spaced out throughout the day. Um, in the chat, I see somebody says they're simply just not hungry. And I, I understand that. And that could be a variety of reasons, maybe kind of similar to what I was saying, but um, maybe a, a, a large breakfast and not hungry for a lunch. There could be many reasons for that. Does anybody else want to share? Okay. So kind of going along with what I was just saying, we know that when we are running on an empty stomach, right? Maybe we skipped breakfast, maybe we skipped lunch, maybe we just skipped one or the other, but whenever we're having an empty stomach, it can be quite challenging to really focus on the task at hand that we need to get done for the next few hours. It can be challenging to concentrate, and we could have lower energy levels because of this. Now, I also realize in reverse, kind of maybe what um, Joe was talking about there, that when we eat potentially too much at each meals or maybe not very um, overall healthy choices or food choices at that meal that aren't packed with nutrients, again, I'm talking vitamins, minerals, fiber, that that can really put us in a lower energy level as well, right? If we're eating really heavy foods, then we have the complete opposite effect, right? We ate, but maybe not the healthiest choices, and we also have lower energy levels. So the food choices that we make at each of our meals, even though we're talking about lunch in particular today, the food choices that we make at each of those meals really play a role in our long-term energy levels throughout the day. So what we're going to be focused on today is creating, discussing meals and snacks that are balanced between protein, fats, and fiber. Joe had mentioned the word carbohydrates, right? 
And I just love to just reiterate the fact that fiber is a type of carbohydrate, right? I think the word carbohydrate gets a negative uh, reputation because we lump sugars into that and sugar is a type of carbohydrate. But today we're focusing on the carbohydrate that is fiber. Why? Protein, fat, and fiber all tend to digest slower in our body. And when we have that slowed digestion, we are feeling satisfied from that meal and snack for a longer period of time. So then it gives us sustained energy levels until we are finally ready to eat that next meal or snack. But when we're also feeling fuller for longer, kind of I think that was uh, maybe Jenny that was mentioning that, then we are less likely to eat larger portions at that next meal, right? Because we're not starved because the meal prior was a long lasting, slow digesting meal full of protein, fat, and fiber. That's our goal today, protein, fat, and fiber to talk about. So what is protein? Protein we know is, um, you know, it, it can be animal-based, it can be plant-based. We know that it can be slower digesting when it's worked into a meal with fat and fiber. And so just some ideas that I had for protein options, I think for um, lunch lunches are, um, you know, maybe canned tuna, maybe it's canned salmon, uh, beans like black beans or garbanzo beans, kidney beans, um, chicken could be an option or turkey. Um, Greek yogurt, I think, is a commonly consumed um, protein choice at lunch. But we also think about other plant proteins like edamame. Uh, nuts can be a good protein source as well. And I'm talking about all the nuts, cashews, pistachios, almonds, and then hummus, right? I know that's a type of um, a food choice from the garbanzo bean, but hummus could be used, you know, as a spread or a dip uh, just to give that extra protein and a good fiber and fat source as well. So that's just an overview of some of um, the good protein sources that are lean, meaning they don't have a lot of saturated fats in them that can kind of have us have us feeling like that sluggish energy level throughout the afternoon. Um, and, and just a good source of protein plus nutrient dense, right? We're getting lots of vitamins and minerals from these. We're not looking at a screen full of empty calories here. Moving on to fats, you will notice maybe looking at this screen that I have emphasized unsaturated fats. Unsaturated fats are heart healthy fats. I know this isn't a heart healthy conversation, but um, those are the types of fat that would be very beneficial in including in our lunches. You will probably notice when I'm talking about protein, fat, and fiber, that some of these foods fit into all of these um, three categories that I'm talking about. So to start, right, we've got nuts. Well, I just said that was a protein. It is a protein source. It's also an excellent unsaturated um, fat choice. Avocados, um, olive oil, a small amount of olives, knowing that those are a high sodium choice too, but still very good as far as unsaturated fats are concerned. Um, certain seeds, right? So sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, finding recipes that include some, some more seeds in them. And then peanut butter, just a, a good economical protein source as well, even though I didn't list it in the protein section but also a very good unsaturated fat. So commonly consumed fats to think about when developing lunch meals. So next poll question is, what is your favorite unsaturated fat to use at lunch? So you're going to see the poll um, pop up on your screen and we've got a couple of options, but we also have an other. So we've got avocado, peanut butter, olive oil, maybe it's nuts. And if it's other, you like some other form of unsaturated fat at lunch, go ahead and choose other. And then I wanna hear your answer in the chat. So I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to answer that question.
I see one person answer, uh, answer others. So I'm looking forward to hearing your answer in the chat if you, okay, all of the other, all of the other ones that I listed probably, yes. All right, looks like most of you have responded to the poll question. And number one answer is peanut butter. Not surprised by that, right? That's a quick, easy, um, balanced choice between protein and fat. So love that. And it's quite versatile, right? We could um, have a peanut butter sandwich. We can um, put some peanut butter on a, on a piece of fruit, like a banana or an apple, which is a great snack. Uh, Gail said, I usually have some cashews or pistachios at lunchtime. Yeah, so nuts can be a really just great option as just a little side uh, to any other balanced meal. And then the other two um, common answers there were olive oil and, and nuts. Yeah, very good. Sam says, Crazy Richard's 100% peanuts peanut butter is great. No salt, sugar, or oils added. So um, sounds like 100% just natural peanut butter. Crazy Richard's 100% peanuts peanut butter is what Sam is mentioning. And then, oh, Joe is sharing. Ah, she's having some breakfast. She's having a banana and peanut butter smoothie as we speak. That sounds delicious. It's very good. Thank you guys so much for sharing. So let's talk about our last um, a group that we really want to make sure that we're including an adequate amount of, yes, at lunch, but I'm going to encourage fiber at breakfast and dinner and our snacks too. Fiber is a carbohydrate, as I mentioned. Um, you know, our goals for fiber are pretty high in comparison to what the research shows uh, we as Americans consume on a pretty regular daily basis. So the research shows that in the United States, most Americans are only getting maybe 13, 14 grams of fiber per day, which is pretty low in comparison to the recommendation. So maybe you've been to another class in which we talked about fiber goals, but the general recommendation for um, a healthy um, you know, woman is you know, 25, 28, 30 grams of fiber per day with an overall healthy man recommendation for fiber of about 30 to 35 grams of fiber per day. So we can see that those recommendations compared to how much we're actually taking in, there's a big difference there. And fiber is helpful in many ways, right? Fiber keeps us fuller longer. Fiber can very, be very helpful in decreasing you know, cholesterol levels. Um, you know, if we're trying to manage good blood sugar levels, you know, if we've got diabetes or just for overall energy levels, um, fiber is slower digesting. And so that can be helpful with energy and sugar levels too. Um, and then of course, right, fiber is good. If you're dealing with any constipation, that can be um, very beneficial there as well. So what are our fiber sources? Again, our list goes above and beyond this, but these are really good fiber sources that I have listed here. So beans, because you know that's a protein and a fiber. So as I mentioned, you're gonna see commonly consumed foods that, that share um, you know, nutrients. So beans are a great source of fiber. Again, um, you know, pinto beans and great northern beans and, um, you know, maybe a split pea or a lentil kind of falls into that category as well. Um, right underneath the kidney beans, you, what you're seeing there is a picture of quinoa. So quinoa is a whole grain, um, a, a, a good protein and a good fiber source. Uh, quinoa as a whole grain as a probably the highest amount of protein, if I dare say, for the whole grains. I may be incorrect on that, but a really good source of protein there. Um, and that kind of falls into the same category as like, you know, brown rice has got a little bit of, um, you know, fiber, if that's more of an economical choice or a wild rice. So there are other fiber sources from our grains. Oatmeal, um, oats are good fiber sources too. Um, pears, raspberries, broccoli. I've got whole grain bread um, there. They're shown on the screen too. So a whole grain bread, not necessarily a whole wheat bread, but a whole grain bread is going to be a better fiber source overall. And then the, the bottom picture there is popcorn. 
I don't think we think about popcorn very often when it comes to being a good fiber source. I mean, obviously being mindful of maybe what kind of things we might add to that butter, you know, or I'm thinking butter, what we might add to that popcorn, um, like butter, or if we're adding salt, then, you know, that that adds some empty calories, um, but popcorn, you know, by itself can be a really good snack option. If we need a nighttime snack or just the middle of the day, it can be a great source. All right, so remember that when we are building any healthy meal, we can use this plate as guidance. Um, you uh, may have seen this before in some of my previous uh, classes that I've had. Um, and this differs a little bit from maybe another plate that you have seen. What I'm showing you today is the healthy eating plate from Harvard Medical School. And you will see that it is similarly set up um, to maybe a, a previous plate that you've seen in the fact that um, a quarter of the plate has whole grains like quinoa, wild rice, brown rice, oats, um, you know, a whole grain pasta that can be, you know, fall into that quarter of the plate. Your healthy proteins like your, uh, you know, uh, skinless chicken or uh, skinless turkey, or maybe it's your fish, or maybe you're doing plant proteins and that would be your beans or maybe even tofu that falls into that quarter of the plate. The other half of the plate, what you're seeing is a, a larger portion of vegetables. Um, vegetables as in that broccoli that I showed you, um, asparagus, uh, green beans, salad, all of those fall there in that vegetable section. And then just a smaller serving of fruit, right? You could have a pear there, you could have some raspberries, some blueberries, an apple. I think the two big differences from maybe some of the other plates that you have seen is that there is the inclusion of the healthy oils on this plate. Um, and that might be healthy oils, but it might just be other healthy fats too, like the nuts that somebody was sharing that they have at lunch or the peanut butter. Um, it could be the sauteing of vegetables in an olive oil. It could be um, a salad that is dressed with maybe olive oil and vinegar or another vinaigrette um, as, a, as a fat choice at that meal. Again, fat protein and fiber is the emphasis here in looking at this healthy eating plate that we can use for both breakfast, lunch, and for dinner. And then um, one of the other choices here, obviously for beverage, we've got water shown on the plate. Um, it could be, you know, unsweetened tea. It could be a black coffee. The emphasis is just not on, you know, a bunch of added sugars because that would be, again, that, that, the, where the research showed that we get a lot of empty calories from is, is high sugar uh, sources. And, um, you know, milk is obviously an option there too. Uh, a couple of servings a day of a low fat um, milk, or if you're lactose intolerant or avoiding milk for other reasons, and it can be a plant-based milk there too, as long as it is um, fortified uh, with calcium and vitamin D. So that is a good visual, I think, in planning out a, a healthy breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So let's talk about some lunch ideas. And these are just ideas that I came up with, but I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to share. So start thinking about what are some healthy lunch ideas that you guys have. So um, again, looking at that plate, right, we're thinking whole grains, we're thinking protein, we're thinking fruit, we're thinking vegetable, healthy fat, and water. So I came up with a tuna salad sandwich on whole grain bread with a side salad so we can get our vegetables, right? Maybe it's spring mix, maybe it's spinach, cucumbers, tomatoes, whatever it is that you wanted to put on there that is dressed with a vinaigrette. So I'm gonna have some oil there for healthy fats and an, a small apple on the side, right? I got my protein, I got my healthy fats, I got my fiber from the bread and the apple. I hit all the marks. Um, above and beyond that there, we've got a veggie wrap. So I've got a whole grain tortilla. So I'm meeting my whole grains for fiber. I've got hummus for a spread. So I'm getting some extra protein and fiber and hummus also has olive oil in it too. So I'm getting some fats, healthy fats there. You can throw in whatever vegetables you want, right? Um, 
you know, strips of, of carrots, um, you know, uh, celery you could put in there, you could put uh, diced tomatoes or a sliced tomato, you know, you get to mix that up to whatever vegetables that you like, but the point is that you're getting your vegetables. I've got a side of cottage cheese here, which I realize is a little bit higher in sodium, but it's a good protein source there. It's dairy. I'm getting some calcium from that as well. And then a side of high fiber raspberries to go with it, right? So this was more of a vegetarian option. You can see that there's no meat there, but I'm getting protein, I'm getting calcium, I'm getting fiber from the whole grain tortilla and raspberries and um, fats from the hummus, and like I said, protein from the hummus and cottage cheese. So I'm meeting all the marks there with a meal that is more plant-based over animal-based. Not completely, but more. Um, the other idea that I had there was lentil soup. So lentils are gonna be your fiber source and your protein. Um, a side salad, again, whatever vegetables you wanted to put on that side salad an extra form of protein from a hard boiled egg. And then I'm dressing that with my um, fats and that's a vinaigrette dressing. So hitting all the marks there. Or chicken stir fry with brown rice and steamed stir fry vegetables, right? So I've got chicken being my lean protein. Brown rice can be a fiber source. I'm adding fiber even more so and getting those vegetables. And yes, you can steam those um, vegetables. If you stir fry them even and with a little bit of olive oil, then you're getting some healthy fats there too. Sometimes people will add some nuts to a stir fry, maybe some cashews or something. So that could just be another option and idea to add fats there if you were just using steamed vegetables and didn't saute them with some oil. All right, those are my lunch ideas. What are your lunch ideas? So go ahead and unmute yourself or um, uh, put your lunch idea in the chat. What's your favorite healthy lunch that you want to share with us? So sometimes I will have leftovers from the night before. So if I have like a stir fry, I will have that. Or sometimes what I do also is I will have like um, celery with uh, peanut butter and a... Um, also, I'll have some apples or whatever fruit I have available, and then I'll eat like a um, chickpea burger, and I don't use the bun or whatever, and then I'll just put a little mustard on the top of that, and those are the type of things that I usually eat. Very good. Thanks for sharing. So let's just break that down and make sure we hit all the components, right? So chickpea burger, which means we're getting a fiber and protein from the beans. You said no bun, totally fine, really, right? Because you're getting fiber and that good, you know, that good healthy carbohydrate source from the bean also while getting your protein source. Um, let's say you had celery and peanut butter, right? So we've got some vegetables, we've got peanut butter as an extra protein um, and, and heart healthy fat. And then you said an apple potentially, right? So even more fiber, you're hitting, you're hitting a lot of those marks. Yep, very good. I've been on a quesadilla kick lately. Perfect. So I do like a, uh, a whole grain quesadilla with maybe leftover chicken from the night before or something like that with, uh, I put some low fat cheese on it and then a little guacamole and maybe some black olives in there. Yeah. And you know, we've got that new, um, Horrocks just has, they've expanded yeah. those infused oils I'm getting addicted to because it adds flavor without having to go to a lot of trouble. Okay. So uh, share with us, if you don't mind, when you're talking about the infused oils, how did you incorporate that into the quesadilla? Um, I just put a, just a little bit in my pan when I put the quesadilla in to brown it up a little bit. So it adds a little bit of the oil there and it gives a lot of flavor too. Yes, I would imagine something like a garlic infused olive oil would really add a nice element to a quesadilla. Right, or the zesty onion. I heard your favorite, zesty onion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, we've got some people in the chat here sharing um, avocado toast, right? So avocados being that heart healthy fat, um, a whole grain bread for your toast, hard boiled egg for your protein, and you got some vegetables there too with the tomato, perfect. Oh, Ezekiel bread, yes. A whole grain bread. Um, Sam, I'm not sure if you wanna share maybe where you find the Ezekiel bread, if you wouldn't mind. 
and then Dave's Killer Bread. I've seen that a couple of places. I've seen Dave's Killer Bread only at Sam's Club or Sam, I see you're unmuting, so I'll let you share. Um, yeah, Dave's Killer Bread, you can actually find a lot of places these days, depending on where you look located, Target, Meyer, um, Walmart, well, no, not necessarily Walmart, but Costco can use it, and you can get it at Costco and get two loaves for a pretty good price. I'm not sure my husband, come on, I picked it up. Um, and then like the Ezekiel bread, which is sprouted bread, which is really good. It's really dense bread, but I like that type of thing. Um, that you can find pretty much anywhere. Um, they have it sometimes in the freezer section because it is a bread that, um, you know, doesn't last very long because it's got no flour in it. It's all just sprouted grains and it's very moist. Um, but they sell that at Trader Joe's as well. The musicians like Target and Myers and um, DMW and Hardings and all those regular types of grocery stores. Yeah, very good. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I've seen Ezekiel bread at Meyer often, um, generally frozen. Yes. Um, Sam, if you don't mind, do you usually ever see Ezekiel bread not frozen? I have seen it not frozen at Trader Joe's actually. Last time I was there a couple of weeks ago, um, we just happened to be going down, you know, by the, the breads and oatmeal and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, they've got Ezekiel bread. And actually, when I lived in Chicago, I had seen it at Walmart not frozen. Okay. It's so definitely frozen more often, but a couple of places you'll be able to find it unfrozen. Very good. Thanks for sharing, Sam. I appreciate that. All right, anybody else want to share their favorite healthy lunch? Again, you can chat or unmute yourself. All right. So what else can we do during our lunch time besides have a nutrient packed meal? Um, so here are some things that I thought that, you know, maybe we only have a few minutes, you know, maybe it's just 20, 30 minutes to, to just take a break for ourselves in the middle of the day, refuel with our nutrient packed lunch ideas that we came up with together and you guys shared. Thank you guys so much. You know, what are some of the other things that we can do to kind of um, you know, rejuvenate ourselves in the middle of a day, especially when, you know, we're, you know, maybe tired, we've been running all day, we've been working all day, just to kind of get a, a kickstart for the, the second half of whatever your day may look like. So here are some things that I thought of, um, you know, if you've got enough time going for a short walk, right? I mean, most of us are don't have an hour to spend potentially at lunch, right? But if we can break up, you know, a, a 20, 30 minute break with 10 minutes, you know, eating our, our uh, lunch and, and 10 minutes just going for a short walk. If we've got easy access to get outside and take a walk and, you know, the sun is shining now. So enjoying some sunshine um, or if it's just going up and down the hallway just to kind of get, again, rejuvenated, get blood pumping, especially if we've been sitting um, for the majority of the morning. Um, maybe it's enjoying some alone time, right? Maybe you appreciate alone time as an individual. Maybe you spent most of your morning, you know, having to, to kind of collaborate with other people and maybe you just need some space, so some alone time, you know, just doing a little bit of reading or maybe listening to some music just to kind of relax. Maybe it's some quiet time, just sitting, sitting in a quiet area with your eyes closed, doing some deep breathing or med maybe some meditation. Um, or maybe you're working alone or you've been alone all morning. And so having a, a short connecting moment with somebody, you know, um, shooting a friend or a family member a text or giving them a quick phone call and seeing how their day is going or sharing a fun moment that you had that day or asking them what their weekend plans are. And just having that short connecting moment could be something that could really kind of revitalize our energy levels um, for the remainder of the day. Uh, maybe we have been standing all day, uh, maybe working in a, in a factory setting or whatever it may be. We've been standing, kind of sitting in or, or standing in that same exact 
position and maybe our back is sore, our legs are sore. So maybe doing some stretching or if your morning has is looked like setting all morning, um, getting up and kind of doing that same thing, right? Um, focusing on posture while we are sitting. But if we are noticing that we're getting a little bit of, um, you know, sore back from sitting or whatever it is, sore hips from sitting, then just doing some stretches to kind of loosen up um, during that lunch break so we can move on with our day. And then if you're spending a lot of time um, on electronic devices in the morning, whether it be TV or a computer or at work, um, kind of just stepping away and taking that, you know, electronic device or screen break, um, stepping away from that screen, not resorting on lunch break to looking at your phone instead, you know, catching up on social media, whatever, right? I'm speaking from experience here, you guys. Um, but stepping away from that screen, giving your eyes and your brain a little bit of break from that um, electronic device and, and just getting out and looking at something further away, right? Looking at the trees, um, it, it just kind of stepping away from those screens. So I want to hear from you guys. What other healthy behaviors could you enjoy during a lunch break that's not related to food or add to that list that I came up with? Go ahead and unmute or chat. What other uh, uh, healthy behaviors could you enjoy during a short lunch break? Sometimes I will do my stationary bike you know, for a while to be able to just kind of get myself moving. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's important to get, to get, it helps you with stretching, right? It helps you with energy levels. You know, those, that exercise can be so helpful when it, when it comes to, you know, sustaining energy levels for hours after just even doing short bursts of exercise. So a stationary bike sounds great if you've got access to that. Yes. Thank you. I will actually, you know, I work at home now um, remotely, and I will be streaming music, and I'll put on a, a energizing playlist, and I'll just actually dance in my chair <laughs> while I'm working. Yes. Uh, and actually, it does help a lot. It's just kind of, you know, motivated mentally and physically, you know, yeah. kind of. So I, I think what you shared was dancing in your chair. Is that correct? I can do that while I'm working or, or otherwise. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Fun. I'm saying if it's a quiet time, I'll just you know go in the bedroom and with the cats and just play with the, our two cats. That's relaxing. Yes, that's a, a great idea for those maybe that are working from home and um, enjoying your pets during that um, small work break. I like that, right? We know that pets are good for the soul. There's a lot of research that show that, you know, petting the, the cat or petting the dog can help decrease blood pressure. So that sounds super relaxing. I love that idea. Thanks for sharing that, Sam. And then we've got a few people making some suggestions in the chat. Let's see where they're at. But if you want to unmute and share still, please do so. This is what is my downfall? I grab something to eat and go right back to work. I hear you. Maybe, just maybe, you've got some ideas to kind of break that habit now and take advantage of a full break. Uh, Nikki says we just adopted a dog this week. His Oh, he's high energy. So I think a quick walk around the block will be good for both of us. I love that. A win-win strategy there on lunch break. Um, Gail says her dog loves Nikki's suggestion. I love that. Well, Gail, sounds like you got something good to do. You can grab your snack and go on a walk. Love that. Anybody else have any other um, thoughts that you uh, could do? For lunch break, it sounds like we're all on the same page here. So I love that. I just love that you guys brought pets into the, to the conversation. So that's great. All right. So last but not least, as far as asking you guys questions, what are your goals, right? What is one thing you learned today that you are going to work on or use in the next week? So either go ahead and unmute and share with us what you're going to work on or 
type it in the chat or if you don't feel comfortable sharing it out loud, write it down on a scrap piece of paper or make a, a mental note of what your goal is. What are you guys going to do? I need to just not eat and go back to work. I, I need to do something. It doesn't matter how much is stacked up. It's still going to be there. Yes, so I need to make a conscious effort to do that. So what's the strategy, Gail? I'm gonna I'm gonna inquire a little bit further, right? So what what is it you're gonna do? Uh, yeah, well, my pit bull is looking at me right now. She likes Nikki's idea. <laughs> Usually we do we do walks at the end of the day, but maybe doing a ten minute walk. I mean, ten minutes isn't that much time. Nope. Extra. We live mm -hmm. out in the country, so she's less bored. I can get out and do something. Maybe just relax my mind a little bit. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to do that. I'm leaving actually as soon as this is over. Uh, driving to Kansas to take my granddaughter to a rabbit show. But wow. when we get back, that's that's going to be high on my priority list. Love it. Mark it down on the calendar. Thanks, Gail. Uh, Zoom user, Jenny, I see you're unmuted. So go ahead and share if you want. Yeah, um, I think one of the things that I've taken away from it, my corgi, he is not one to like to walk too far, but maybe I can, you know, coax him to go a little bit further or something like that, because he's kind of one of those laid back and he just doesn't, you know, and then sometimes he'll look at me like, really, we're going to do this again. But that's one thing I think is a real good idea. And the other thing is too, is be more mindful of not taking the break earlier so that I'm not rushing to just grab anything at like two o'clock in the afternoon so that I get something in before, you know, everybody comes home for dinner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that that's a challenge for a lot of people. So what is the strategy for taking the break earlier? I think what I, I was thinking of is that maybe um, setting an alarm saying, okay, let's eat lunch at this time. And, you know, because usually my choices are okay. It just depends upon the day too. But most generally, I try to either like eat leftovers that I've had the night before, like I said before, or, you know, one of the other options I've said, it's just a matter of saying, okay, you've got the time, you can do it. Let's just eat a little earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, setting that alarm sounds like a, a great idea to... To, to get you on schedule and say, hey, it's it's time. It's time to step away. It's time to take care of yourself for a second. Like Gail says, it'll still be there when you come back. Um, but, you know, you might even find yourself to be, you know, more efficient, more focused, more concentrated after just taking that short break, despite what the Corgi has to say about it. <laughs> Yeah, he's stubborn. <laughs> he's got those short little legs, you know. I, I give him, I give him some grace. <laughs> All right, uh, Nikki says, be more mindful of lunch choices, just in general, to make sure that I have all of the necessary elements. Yes, protein, fat, fiber, long sustained energy levels, and and satisfaction. Uh, for longer periods of time after that meal, right? Because we're thinking meal spacing, right? You guys are talking about like, oh, I, I forgot to eat lunch at noon. Here it is two o'clock. I'm eating something real quick. Everybody's coming home at five. You know, we're really looking like, you know, four, you know, four hours or so in between meals. So we really want those elements, right? Your use of protein, fat, and fiber to get us through those four hours or so until that next meal. So thanks for bringing that up again, Nikki. Uh, Joe says, make an effort to eat lunch more often. I love that, Joe. Uh, she shared that she only eats, you know, one of those two meals each day. And again, maybe even just something small, right? Uh, you think about those like uh, bento box type of ideas, um, you know, like um, like adult lunchables, right? So even if it's just something small in that way, a hard boiled egg, some, you know, peanuts or cashews some celery sticks or, or carrot or cherry tomatoes, whatever it is, right? Some blueberries, some raspberry. It can just be little, be little finger foods, nothing big, right? But something that is protein, fat, and fiber to have those energy levels throughout the day. Sam says, eat a healthy lunch every day, even if it's just hummus and veggies. Yep, and also get away from my, com 
computer more often. Okay, I think we all are in agreement. We need to step away from our computers more often. Very good, I love your goals. Thank you guys so much for sharing that. Um, so all in all, I think we learned why uh, lunch is important, just as important as breakfast. Uh, we discussed how to make the most of our lunchtime, even if we just have a short period of time, uh, and to get a quick, easy, nutrient-packed lunch in food, um, but also take advantage of a few additional minutes from a lunch break, too, and, and just kind of step away from our screens and, and capitalize on whether it be spending time with our pets or just getting outside for a short walk. And then we brainstormed some uh, nutrient-packed lunches. I loved your guys' ideas. Thank you guys so much for, for adding those to our list. So last here is our future classes. I thank you guys so much for being here with me today and talking about lunch. Here is what you can look forward to in the coming classes. So uh, that looks like next Wednesday, the 19th from two to three o'clock, we have a healthy cooking class coming up. I'm not sure if you guys have been able to attend any of the healthy cooking classes, um, but our, our uh, cooking class is gonna be jam jar salad. So you know, those little leftover jam jars that we all might have at home. We're going to be making some quick, easy lunches, potential lunch options there, um, salads that you can make the night before and just have a quick, easy option for yourself the next day. Um, the next Thursday morning class is going to be April 27th. We're going to be talking about food waste. We've got a ramen noodle class coming up, some movement classes. May is Mediterranean month, so med the Mediterranean diet. So we're going to have some conversation on that. Uh, we've got some cancer prevention classes coming up with our cancer care dietitian, uh, Jillian. So she's going to come with her expertise on how to eat the rainbow for cancer prevention. And then, you know, summer's coming. So we got to have some summer related classes and talk about summer barbecues. So those are our classes, April and um, May. But always look at the Bronson Health website or the Bronson Eats portion of the Bronson website for all of our other upcoming classes, too, because June's classes are already scheduled on there as well. So get them on your calendar. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, but I will stay on for a few more minutes if you guys have any questions or comments.